This video is part of a series. It's heavy in scientific terminology and may expect familiarity with previous videos. If you're confused, please watch the rest of the playlist up until this point, or check out my genetics terminology document, both of which are linked in the description. Thanks! <laughs> Does anyone else hear boss battle music? The genes covered in this video are my favorite cat genes. Hands down, they're gorgeous. But they're also some of the most complicated. This video is going to get intense, but bear with me, it'll be worth it. I'm gonna start us off with something relatively simple. The eye locus, short for inhibitor. The recessive little eye allele makes a normal, full-color cat. Having one or more copies of the dominant capital I inhibitor allele messes with the banding on a cat's hair. This has different effects depending on whether the cat is a non-tabby self or a tabby. For tabbies, inhibitor strips the agouti hairs of the pheomelanin in their bands, leaving the bands whatever base color the cat is, plus unpigmented white. In a ginger tabby, it seems to still only affect the lighter bands, leaving the full color pheomelanin alone, but it's more effective with black-based cats. This gives the cat a silvery, sometimes white-looking agouti pattern around their normal stripe color. The phenotype is called silver, so a black silver tabby, a blue silver tabby, etc. But for some reason, gingers are called cameos? Sure. And if someone ever just says silver tabby, they probably mean a black silver. What about tick tabbies, who are basically all agouti hair? Well, same thing. The agouti hairs get their banding silvered, and the result is a silvery cat, and whatever traces of stripes remain are still the normal, true color. In self-cats, who are homozygous recessive little a little a, inhibitor's effect is a bit different, because self-cat's hairs have no banding. What inhibitor does instead is add a long, pale band to the base of the hairs, and the tip remains full color. We call this smoke. Black smoke, blue smoke, and, uh, cameo again. Remember, all ginger cats are phenotypically tabbies even when they don't have the tabby gene. I've seen red cats with inhibitor who look more like smokes, but I think this is either selective breeding or the pattern. Ticked cameos are more likely to look smoky, for instance. Smoke looks different in short hairs than in long hairs. In short hairs, we can kind of see the edges of ghost stripes around where inhibitor is affecting fur that would be a goatee on a tabby more than the fur that wouldn't be, sneakily revealing an underlying pattern. This also technically happens in long hairs, but we can't see it as well because the hairs are so long and overlapping, so they look like this instead. Tortoiseshells can of course be smoke or silver too. It appears that capital I might be incomplete dominant, but the difference between the homozygote and heterozygote phenotypes is minimal. In silver tabbies, the silver might be more of an off silver, a quality which is called tarnishing. For smokes though, there really doesn't seem to be a noticeable difference between homo and heterozygotes. Because we aren't certain, and because it really only affects silver tabbies and not smokes, I'm going to consider capital I completely dominant for our purposes. Next up is wideband. Wideband is exactly what it says on the tin. A cat with widebanding has wider bands in their agouti hairs. This also makes the cat's in-between stripe pattern lighter, but in a yellowy way that we refer to as golden. These are golden tabbies. Black golden, chocolate golden, ginger golden, even torty golden. Like with silver, if somebody just says golden tabby, they probably mean a black golden. You can even have dilute golden. Unlike inhibitor, widebanding seems to only affect tabbies. A homozygous little a little a cat can only carry widebanding but can never express it. Is it a gradient trait? Probably. But unlike rufusing, which we describe in relative terms, you know, more or less rufusing, higher, lower, so on, cats either are or aren't considered golden. Similar to spotted tabbies, actually and from what I can find, the deciding point is a little arbitrary. We honestly don't know that much about wideband, so I can't give you much more than this. For fictional purposes, I like to use the outdated monogenetic dominant model just because it's simpler and ape brain like simple pattern. Capital WD for golden and lowercase wd for not golden. It's not accurate, but if it's just for art purposes, it'll save you some headache. This is where things get complicated. This is also where I wish I could give you more information than I have. Researching how inhibitor and widebanding interact on the same cat is a headache. There's a million arbitrary terms, no one agrees on any of them. I'm going to do my best to make it both accurate and simple for you, but please, cut me some slack. A chinchilla cat looks like this. Their hairs are depigmented, except for colored tips. This is either the result of extreme widebanding, or it's a silver-ticked tabby who has been selectively bred to be paler. 
Or maybe the selective breeding that makes a silver tick tabby into a chinchilla is wide banding. Who knows? A silver tick tabby can also be called silver tipped, particularly when they haven't had the fancy selective breeding to look more like you'd expect from a silver tabby. There's also a phenotype called shaded silver, which one source claims is the term for a silver mackerel tabby, but the Cat Fanciers Association distinguishes between those as distinct phenotypes, so I have no idea what shaded silver is genetically. If I had to make an educated guess, and I swear back in the day I saw something suggesting this, but now I can't find it, so take it with a big grin of salt. Shaded silver is, like chinchilla, an interaction between inhibitor and widebanding. So, inhibitor makes the cat silver. Then a significant number of widebanding genes make the cat into a shaded silver, or they're just ticked. And then even more widebanding genes make the cat into a chinchilla, but only if they're ticked. That's my best guess from what I've been able to put together. And if these cats don't have silver, then either they're all just golden tabbies, or they use the same nomenclature with golden instead of silver. Golden tabby, then a golden shaded tabby, then a golden chinchilla. I've also heard the term golden shell, but I can't find any genetic info and my best guess is that these are just golden ticked tabbies. Okay, enough tabbies. What about smokes? If wideband interacts with inhibitor, what does it do to smokes? Nothing, because even though inhibitor is there, wideband still won't affect a self-cat. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of info and it's not even super concrete. I wish I had better data for you. I really do. Here is my best teal deer. Simplified, thus not entirely accurate, but it's good enough for a basic OC family trees and character design. Inhibitor makes a tabby cat silver and a self cat smoke. Wideband is polygenetic and makes a tabby cat golden, but does not affect selfs. High levels of widebanding might make a cat golden shaded. Combining inhibitor and wideband in a tabby makes a cat either silver shaded or chinchilla depending on how much widebanding there is and if the cat is ticked or not. No matter how much wideband a self cat has, they won't show it, even if they have inhibitor. Phew! That's a lot, and it might not even be accurate! The info is messy, and no one agrees with anybody else, but we're gonna move on because believe it or not, we're not done yet! This is the section where I talk about some weirder, rarer phenotypes. I would normally save these for one of the last videos since they're so uncommon and understudied, but when they were first discovered, they were mistaken for golden, so I'm including them here. The extension locus, also known as MC1R, is a modifier of a goatee that is in basically every mammal that has a goatee. In cats, there's four alleles on the extension or E locus that we know of. Capital E, which is a normal cat. Little e, which expresses the amber phenotype. Little r, which expresses the russet phenotype and the recently discovered little EC, which expresses the carnelian phenotype, also known as copal, also known as sardolic, also known as a lot more things because it's so new breeders and geneticists are just calling it any fun word they can think of. Capital E normal coloration appears to be completely dominant over amber and russet. While we think carnelian might be incomplete dominant with normal coloration, more on that later. I don't know the dominance interactions between Amber, Russet, and Carnelian. I don't think anyone has bred those cats together. I wasn't able to find anything. Amber is found in the Norwegian forest cat breed, which is just a normal cat breed with a fancy name. They're not wild cats or anything. Of course, you're a writer slash artist. You can just say your cool OC has some Nigerian forest cat ancestors or was a kitty pet or something. Black-based cats homozygous for Amber will be born their normal black-based colors. As they grow up, their eumelanin will be gradually replaced by pheomelanin, turning the cat orange. Their leathers, noses and paw pads, stay eumelanin-based. But that's what happens to tabbies, anyway. For solid-slash-self-black cats, amber works more like inhibitor in that it makes a silver tabby, but it keeps their leathers and the bridge of their noses black. Russet is apparently only found in Burmese cats, which I assume means the breed Burmese and not the color Burmese. So I don't see a reason why you can't use it in your fictional cats and just say they have a Burmese ancestor. Black-based homozygous little r little r cats are born tabbies regardless of their A locus genotype, just like ginger cats. Their tail tips, genital area, and the fur around their paw pads is unusually light, and their nose and pad leathers are pale pink. Like with Amber, as the cat gets older, pheomelanin starts to replace eumelanin, starting at the spine and moving down. However, 
Unlike Amber, russet cat's bellies keep some eumelanin. Carnelian acts like Amber, but instead of the cat's pigments getting replaced as they grow up, the cat's pigments are replaced during development in the womb, so the cat is born already orange. Amber seems to interact normally with inhibitor and wideband, at least normal by ginger standards. Uh, they make cameos. I don't know about russet, I couldn't find anyone who tried. Carnelian, though, is strange. And keep in mind, this is a brand new gene, we're still studying it, info is incomplete at best. But what info there is, people uh, seem to agree on... <laughs> so far! <laughs> As I mentioned, Carnelian seems to be incompletely dominant with normal coloration, in a way where the cat is Carnelian but not as much, similar to ticked and arguably silver. They're a little more brown and sometimes they look like golden tabbies. Also, kittens may be born darker and then get lighter as they grow up. Carnelian seems to interact in unique ways with a goatee inhibitor and widebanding, but I couldn't find phenotypes for every interaction between all four genes. All I could find was these pictures from Messy Beast and their captions. The source and the full article that goes with it are linked in the description. I would assume that dilute affects amber and russet in the same way it affects regular gingers by turning them cream, but I don't know for sure. The jury is fully out on Carnelian. I'm so sorry I got no clue. And finally, Amber, Russet, and Carnelian don't affect ginger cats because they're already ginger. I can't give you practice punnet squares for like most of the topics covered in this video for various reasons, but I can give you this. Here's a black silver tabby father and a solid black mother. We covered capital A Agodi being completely dominant in the previous video. If you watch the multi-locus punnet square section in the first video, Concepts and Terminology, and you want to challenge yourself, try to figure out their kitten with a single punnet square. Here's their genotypes for you. Capital A, little a, capital I, capital I, and little a, little a, little i, little i. For everyone else, we'll do this with two punnet squares. For simplicity, we're not going to do percentage math, we're just going to look at what kittens are possible. Here's a goatee first. As usual, pause to do the punnet squares yourself. They can either have a tabby kitten or a self kitten, an equal chance of both. Now let's look at inhibitor. Hey, good job! The only possible kitten here is heterozygous. Now, let's put these two Punnett squares together. The kitten has to have one copy of inhibitor, but they may or may not be a tabby. So there's two possible phenotypes. The kitten can either be a black smoke or a silver tabby, maybe with some tarnishing. And then you add any of those other genes we talked about and it becomes a mess! The next video is going to be much simpler. I'm going to cover the albino locus, which includes color point patterns. I'll see you there.